B time. So today we're going to be talking about Block B's new song, Jackpot. ka -ching! So the basic plot of it seems to be a girl walks into an abandoned circus and she finds loads of like really cute idols and they're all like in the window and they're like... <laughs> and then she's just like, oh my god, what the hell are they doing there? And then she faints and they're all like... <laughs> she looks fun, let's take her home with us. And they kidnap her and they like do loads of games with her and they have loads of trials and they interrogate her at one point. She tries to run away quite a few times, um, although I'm not really sure why because, come on, you know, it's not why, why would you try and run away from that? The psycho coolness of Block B. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. But they're a bit strange. Yeah. But in the end it seems to be that she embraces all the fun and all the silliness and she just has fun with them and she completely changes. Like her character changes and because she's learnt to let go I guess. Let it go. First things first, the beginning of the video is really, really creepy. When she's on the sofa and she's unconscious, and there's this guy that's just like playing with her hair, and it's just like, she's fun. And then she wakes up and it's so creepy and it's kind of unsettling. <laughs> The storyline I got from the video and the storyline I got from the lyrics are both very different. From the lyrics, they're talking about wealth, how they want to earn money and a dream of being rich, using the term jackpot as literally meaning winning a jackpot of money. They talk about greed and the fight for success. They say, we toss the dice of destiny and can't allow even one mistake, saying that anything could go wrong, they have to be very aware and they're just trying to get where they want to go really. Do I look like I'm in a drama? I got bored. Sasha, don't leave me! I can't get down! <laughs> don't even ask. <laughs> I seriously. I found so much in it. There's so much hidden in the video. It had a sign with 777 on. In the actual lyrics, he says, the seventh album, seven members, seventh season, representers. <laughs> it's rap, but it's saying that it's they got a thing going. There's seven of them, it's the seventh album. Seven season representers, just to be in there. Seven. Seven. Deadly sins. <gasps> Isn't that sex? No. Seven deadly You know there's that film with Brad Pitt? Seven. Seven's always a, also um, a lucky number, isn't it? Yeah, seven's supposed to be seven. It is the seven deadly sins. I'm in heaven. Action! Okay, so I felt like the bit where Zico is using the girl as a ventriloquist sort of dummy is really important to the story because of the way that she's sort of sitting on his lap and looking really stoic and like her expressions like really emotionless. And he's controlling her movements for her, like making her wave to the crowd and sort of like doing all things like that. <laughs> Costume, I seem to get the idea that it's all about move, that sort of transition from moving from childhood to adulthood, and it's all about a loss of innocence. But in the beginning, you can see all the gentlemen in their like oh so suave suits and light coloredness, and it's amazing. Um, and I guess they could be representing maturity and order, you know, like business. Like, I mean, it kind of ruins it with like they're doing really weird actions. Like one of them's with a feather duster, and one of them's like eating a bug. Yeah. Um, so. Theoretically, it could represent order. Just roll with it. <laughs> okay, and then we see the girl in her little like flowery dress, and she looks really young and really innocent. It would represent like childhood and stuff like that. And by the end, you can see her dressed in all black and white with like really heavy makeup. She's got like the spikes and the chains and the knee high high heel boots, and it's like it's quite it's quite kinky, really. <laughs> so that shows that she's. <laughs> Um, she's really turned into like a woman after all of that, those experiences. I guess you could say that all of that like, childishness and like the tomfoolery has like corrupted her. Do you get what I mean? Like so she's not no longer a child anymore. She's turned into saying tomfoolery and corrupted. <laughs> it, it works. It's not for the age. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, and also she swears at Block B at the end. And if that doesn't show Team Rebellion, I don't know what does. So. Nice my face. Well done. Um, the shot right at the beginning with Zico is like really funky, sort of like pink kimono, and he's adorned with these lucky charms, and he's holding a seven, which is obviously the lucky number. And I guess that sort of corresponds with the whole idea of like the video of the jackpot, because obviously a jackpot is something you get when you're lucky. Like they're chasing the gun, they look like gangsters that are pulled out of like a US crime drama. You know the videos where there's like loads of gangsters and they're like. Oh, 
trying it. really hard to be gangsters. You know, it's that kind of costume. <laughs> Let's face it, Block B's costumes in their videos are nothing short of legendary. Seriously, these guys have so many cool outfits and so many props, which makes them such a fun and dynamic video. Like, none of their videos, for me, have been boring or anything like that. They are so cool and they never disappoint because of how cool they are. Like, you can really tell they put a lot of effort into their videos. And as fans, we really appreciate that because they're just so fun to watch. They are awesome! BBC for life! It's the um, British Broadcasting Corporation, if you didn't know. And CBBC! I did not think that Pio's hair could get any cooler, but dude, serious, like, it did. La, 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 la. Oh, Pio, no one could rock purple curls like you could. We all know Block B are very good dancers. And they have their own very unique and quirky way of dancing too. But it is also very strong and in the dance they do a lot of movements which are like punches and kicks. This is often something that they do and is seen in very good and um, nanny mamba. It's not far from smooth. Movement where they do a step but also jump up at the same time. <laughs> they kick into then a lunge to the side. It's very smooth and it also reminds me of a villain kind of step. You often see in like all the comedy and the comedy cartoon things, the villains are gliding along and doing all these weird walks and that's what it reminds me of. And I think the villain perspective for them is a very good idea for them as they're so quirky. I might have just done the shiny dance behind you. No regrets. <laughs> huh? comments and leave us a like and a favorite and don't forget to subscribe over to you Sasha. Yes yeah, soon I am going to be doing a video which is about the April releases. I've even made a playlist for you to listen through and you might be able to find a new song or band. Follow. What kind of releases are we talking about Sasha? We're talking releases of all different kinds. We got ballads. So is it right? Ballads. We got ballads, we got hip hop, we got country, we got tons and I'm also gonna go put the link for the March playlist we made but we never actually did the video for which also has rock and indie music on. And is this music specific to Korea or is it Japan and places like that? For this playlist it's just going to be Korean music and releases for the past month but at some point I am going to do a video on an introduction to Japanese music. And we're just going to talk a little bit about like the songs that we like and why we like them and stuff like that and it's going to be really fun. <laughs>